Welcome to our mini data bootcamp. I'm Anne Emery, and I'm so glad you're here. Last month, I led a fuller data bootcamp, and we spent a couple days working through data cleaning and data tabulation and data visualization. And in this series, we want to share those time-saving skills with even more people. So in this series, you're going to learn about spreadsheet fundamentals, Excel dashboards, and Power BI dashboards. Let me give you a preview of what we're gonna build in Excel and then in Power BI after that. So we're gonna make an interactive dashboard and it's gonna look sort of like this. We're not gonna fully format it, but we're gonna build the bones of it so that you know how all the pieces fit together. So in this one, we've got some demographic data, all pretend data, of course. We've got info about the services offered at a fictional nonprofit. And we've got some basic survey data showing how people benefited at this nonprofit. It's also interactive. You can use the slicers or the filters up top to explore different cohorts of participants. Like you can see how just the Monday morning group responded or just the Saturday afternoon participants, or, or you could look at just the Sunday evening cohort. This is all pretend data. I think um, have fun looking at the pretend names I made up using some Stranger Things names, using some chat GPT pretend names. This is nobody's real data, but it's inspired by the groups that were at that Fuller Data Bootcamp last month. You can download this spreadsheet and follow along with me. We're not gonna go through every single step, but we're gonna go through the fundamentals. All right, so speaking of the fundamentals, we're gonna start easy and then work up from there. And we're gonna start with some good old text formatting tips. Things like taking a first name like this and turning it into all uppercase, which it currently is, all lowercase, proper case, trimmed, meaning getting rid of extra space bars that might be on there because a lot of databases, when you export your database, when you export your data from it, you get like funny things that have to be cleaned up. And then we're going to join them together and put them last comma first. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see these formulas as we go. And these are pretty quick. I, I think you're going to love them. I think they're going to save you a ton of time. We have, how many pretend people did I make up for this data set? A couple hundred? Yeah. Like a couple hundred people in here. So like sure, in theory, you could do this type of data cleaning by hand, but who's, who's got time for that? That's, that's like, a huge waste of time. Okay, I'm gonna delete this, which is always a little ner nerve wracking. Um, and then we're gonna rebuild it, okay? First, let's say you wanna turn all the names into uppercase. You go into the uppercase cell, you type equals, that's what starts a formula, and then you type in upper. Open up the parentheses and click on the first name, just the one beside it, that you wanna turn into uppercase. Close the parentheses, press the enter key on your keyboard to set it, you know, to tell Excel like, hey, we're done here. Go do your thing. And you get an all uppercase, which it already was. Okay. But when you tap, tap to fill down, you'll see it automatically does that for you. Now, why would you want names in all uppercase? You probably wouldn't. You'd probably want proper case, but these are best taught in a batch because they're all related. Okay, lowercase is the opposite, it's equals lower. Open the parentheses, click on the text that you wanna change, close them, enter, and then find that little green square in the bottom right corner, it's teeny tiny. You have to hover over it so that your cursor changes from the fat white plus sign to the skinny black plus sign. That's where you click and you go click, click, AKA, Tap, tap to fill all the way down your column. All right, proper is just equals proper. Tap, tap, and then, you know, look, all sorts of time savings here. All right, trimming, like I said, means getting rid of the extra spaces. And you might be able to see some of them here. Uh, oh, I just found one. I think I just found one. Like here, before Lucas, we've got an extra space. And we don't want that. 
we just want like regular Lucas. This can cause all sorts of just like weird formatting things later. So trimming is equals trim. You click on the text you want to trim and it's okay if it doesn't have extra spaces, it just like leaves it as is, right? Just like re reformats it. Now, where was Lucas? Lucas, Lucas, Lucas. Where were you with your extra? Oh, Steve Harrington also has an extra space, but look, now he doesn't. Now he's nice and trimmed. Did you know there are over 500 Excel functions and you don't need to learn all of them, but I wanted to teach you a bunch of them really quickly to give you a confidence boost. So we've already done, what, four of them? Upper, lower, proper, trim. Now let's use something called concatenation and piece them back together. Concatenation is joining things. We're going to join the first name and the last name. We say equals the first name and the ampersand, the last name. Press enter and it's going to be and smush Emery, all smushed together. But of course, we can edit that fuller. So you just double click on the cell to edit it or click up here on your formula bar. I'll type up here because it's a little bit bigger font for you to see. Okay, so it's the first name and last name. Let's add a space. I know we just removed spaces, the extra spaces with trim, but now we're gonna add them back. So it's the cell with the first name, which is color coded because it's a cell reference. It's a specific cell, whatever is in that cell, letters, numbers, percentages, it's going to show up in the other concatenated or joined cell and a space, double quotes, space, double quotes. The space is not a cell reference. It's nothing that's color coded. That's why it needs double quotes and the cell with the last name. Okay. And now it's going to be easier on the eyes, right? And space Emery. This is a single formula, but we can also do nested formulas, AKA the onion method of writing formulas. So I'm going to go back in and edit this again, and I'm going to proper case the entire thing. Okay. Nesting, right? It's like you start with the thing you really want that goes in the center of the formula. That's the core. That's the middle, but then you can layer more and more and more editing features to really customize your formulas and get exactly what you need. Okay. A good rule of thumb for collecting data and entering data is always collect the data separately, like just first names, just last names, because you can always piece it back together just with the ampersand. Okay, let's try one more here. Let's do last comma first. So it's equals last and quotes comma space quotes and the first name and let's proper the whole thing. Oh, and we should probably trim the whole thing too, right? Because some of these have extra spaces. Where are we going to put trim at the very beginning, before proper, after proper? I don't think it matters. Let's see. Where is one of our extra space issues? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to search for them. I know they're there. Okay. And then let's trim the whole thing, right? Trim this whole thing. Oh, we've done an extra onion layer. Now this one's a little bit counterintuitive because we're trimming out extra spaces, but then we added a space here, but Excel is okay with that. Excel does not get rid of the space we wanted. It only gets rid of the extra like messy spaces. Okay. I hope this was a good intro to some spreadsheet fundamentals. In the next video, we're going to figure out how old people are. We're going to start with their birth date and then figure out an end date, like the end of the fiscal year or today's date and figure out how old they are based on that day. So we'll do days old, years old, and I'm going to teach you different types of rounding and we'll weigh the pros and cons of different types.